All right, thank you. Is it really Mexican Mother's Day today? I am the worst Mexican ever. Like, I didn't, I didn't even know that was a thing. I'm only half, so that's all right. Hey, it's great to be here with you guys. It's always such an honor to come out uh, and be a part of the churches, but your church especially. Um, we love uh, Pastor Victor and his family, and uh, but especially the Garrisons. We've gotten to know them the last few years especially, and uh, Angie uh, is an incredible youth pastor. She was our youth pastor of the year um, last year, I think, at youth convention, and so that's something... Um, but we do. We love your students. Um, it's, it's always great to be with these students, and, and I've had the chance to be here. I think this is my second time I've gotten to come out here, and most of the time, you guys, when I go somewhere, I'm asked, where's Elliot? Because everyone loves Elliot, and I'm kind of an after, afterthought, but um, he's not with me tonight, but he says hello. We were together all day today. Um, it's, it's great to be here, and we're excited. We just got back from youth convention, so your students and all of us were at youth convention. What an incredible weekend. If you have not experienced youth convention, you need to, after service, go find Angie and volunteer for youth ministry and uh, help on Wednesday nights just to come be a part of youth convention. Youth convention is an event we do every year. Um, this year, we have had uh, the final count was a little over 2,100 uh, teenagers and youth pastors and youth leaders coming together um, in one room to worship God and uh, experience, do worship together. Uh, it's, it's an amazing weekend, and we are so thankful for it, and I hope all you guys had a great time at Youth Convention. But if you were at Youth Convention, uh, one of the things that we did the opening night, we did this whole uh, kind of service where it was all about um, really challenging uh, this generation generation of young people um, to accept the baton and the generation that came before them to pass the baton. And so a lot of you guys were there for that. You experienced that. What I'm talking about tonight is kind of a carryover from youth convention. Um, it's actually with youth convention. I always have a backup sermon for convention in case anything happens to our speakers. And this was what I would have pre uh, preached on that Friday night. But it's not just for the teenagers. Can I tell you, it's for all of you that are here, especially if this is your home church, if this is the church you're planted in, if this, is, if this is the church that you're pouring your life into, this message is for you tonight. And so I want to encourage you guys with that. And, um, you know, I don't do a, a lot of uh, running or anything like that. When I was in high school, I played water polo. I was a swimmer. Um, those are the sports that I did. Um, and and uh, But tonight, I'm going to be talking about uh, passing the baton and running a race. And so with that, um, again, haven't done a lot of racing, but if uh, in one of the races, the four by 100, they, they, it takes four people to run this race. They run around the track, and what they do is they pass the baton. And so each runner at some point passes the baton to the other, and the other receives the baton. I didn't know a lot about this, but I read about it, watched some videos, tried to understand it. Um, and, and so it's simply this. They, they run, and they have to pass the baton in a certain area. So if there's any racers here, people that have run track, you know what this is about. There's this thing called the exchange zone. And the exchange zone is this, this area that the runners are going through. And when they run through that place, that is the only time they can pass the baton. And so they have to pass it in the exchange zone. If they pass it too early, they're disqualified. If they pass it when they're already past the exchange zone, they're disqualified. If they drop it while they're in the exchange zone, they're disqualified. They have to make the perfect pass in the exchange zone. And we've seen this. We've seen this live on the world stage. In 2004, in Athens, um, during the Olympics, we had the best team going into the Olympics. They were ready. Everyone had chosen them. They were for sure going to win the gold. And they were running the race. And uh, they were in it. And in the exchange zone... They handed off the baton too late. They had prepared, they had planned, they had trained, they were picked to be the number one team, and they get to the exchange zone, and it goes wrong, and they hand it off, and, and they get disqualified because they handed it off too early. I'm sorry, too late. And so you had this almost the exact same team going into the Olympics four years later, 2008. They're in Beijing. And again, they've trained, they've practiced, they've learned what it takes to pass the baton. They know they're professionals. And they get into the Olympics, they get onto the world stage, and they're running the race, and they're, they're winning. And they're in the exchange zone. And they drop it. 
and they drop it, and they're disqualified again. And so it's, 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 it's about learning how to pass the baton in the exchange zone. And that's what I want to talk to you guys about tonight. Because we have all kinds of generations represented in this room. We have the youth, we have kids, we have adults, we have grandparents. And so I want to talk to you about the exchange zone. And what that looks like, the spiritual exchange zone, and how that looks for us. Because I can tell you this, I believe in the next generation. I love the next generation. As Angie said, um, I'm a lead pastor um, down in Orange County. I've been a lead pastor, I think this is year five. And I love being a lead pastor, but I still very much consider myself a youth pastor. Um, I've gotten to lead the youth department for the last five years. So all together for me, this is year 33 in youth ministry, um, and I absolutely love it. Uh, this is my family. I think I have that picture up there, and I meant to show that right when I started. Um, but if it's uh, there, there they are. That's my family, and uh, up there, my kids and my wife and my granddaughter. I know I'm a grandpa. Some of you are going, there's no way you're so young. But I am. I'm a grandpa. And um, so that's my family. But I believe in this generation of students. I love this generation of students. But one thing that I have learned from being in the church so long, is that we have got to pass the baton to the next generation. We have got to learn how to do that. It's an important part of us as believers as getting to that place where we're passing the baton. I believe in the next generation of students, but I would say this to you students, and I think you've heard me say this if you are at Youth Convention, you have to receive the baton. If the generation before you is going to pass it, you have to receive it. But church, for us as a whole, this is something that's so important that we do this in the right way. And, and, and there's this spiritual exchange zone that if we get this wrong, it's going to go bad. And so we've got to be willing not only to, again, run with the baton, but pass the baton and receive the baton. And that's what we're going to be talking about tonight. This, this divine relay, this spiritual exchange zone that has to take place. If you have your Bibles, um, I, I encourage you to open up. We're going to read out of Judges chapter 2, and I think it's going to be on the screen too. But Judges chapter 2, uh, verses 6 and 7, and then we'll jump down to verse 10. And this kind of is talking about one of these moments. And let me read it to you. It says this, starting at verse 6 in Judges 2. It says, After Joshua had dismissed the Israelites, they went to take possession of the land, each to their own inheritance. The people served the Lord throughout the lifetime of Joshua and of the elders and outlived him and who had seen all the great things the Lord had done for Israel. So you have this whole generation that had seen all the great things that the Lord had done for Israel. And then you jump down to verse 10 and it says this, after that, after that whole generation had been gathered to their ancestors, after they had passed away, another generation grew up who knew neither the Lord nor what he had done for Israel. She had this whole generation that knew everything and, and knew what the Lord had done, and knew about the Red Sea, knew about Moses, knew all the things that the Lord had brought them through. And then they passed away, and the generation behind them somehow had no idea what the Lord had done and what they had gone through. That is crazy to me that something like that can take place, but it literally it took place. The Bible's talking about this moment that a whole generation had no, had no idea who the Lord was or what he had done for Israel. And so that's what I want to talk about tonight. And I'm not going to take super long tonight, but I want you guys to hear me because I'm talking kind of to two groups in the room tonight. I'm talking to the younger generation, and I'm talking to kind of the present generation. And you can decide where you land in that. I'm not going to tell you if you're young or not. So you decide which generation you're a part of. But I want to talk to you about the spiritual baton passing because, can I tell you, it's so important we get this right. It's so important that we get this right because, again, I can stand here and I believe in the generation behind us. But can I tell you, young people, I believe in the generation that's run the race right now. And they've done an amazing job. The people that have come before you, they're amazing. And God has used them and they're running this race. And so I want to encourage you, as much as I might be talking to them, I'm talking to you as well. So I have... Three different things for each group that I want to read to you about passing the spiritual baton. 
And so uh, I'll start with this. I'll start with passing the baton. So I'm talking to all of you adults. I'm talking to all of you that are kind of the, the, the people that are, are maybe your grandparents, maybe you are parents, but you're the adults in, in the room. You're running this race. And, and I want to talk to you tonight about three things that... Um, Three things that cause us to hold on to the baton too long. Three things that cause us to hold on to the baton too long and not pass it. And so I want to list those things. Number one is this. And this is the one I probably hear the most. You think your way is the best way. One of the things that I see that causes a generation to hold on to the baton too long is they say, well, our way is the best way. Oh, man, when, when we had church, it was church. Oh, when we got together, it was, it was awesome. Worship, man, before it was all this crazy lights and smoke, worship was real worship. And they have all these reasons about how our way was the best way. Our generation was the best generation. The only way I can, I can a good example of that is Disneyland. We all live close to Disneyland. And Disneyland is great. I love Disneyland. I love going to Disneyland. But I'll tell you what, Disneyland, like the way you guys know Disneyland right now, that is not the way Disneyland has always been. How many of you, now I can barely remember this because I'm not going to say I'm that old. I can barely remember when Disneyland had like multiple tickets, like you had the A ticket, the B ticket. Some of you guys remember that. And when you went to Disneyland, you got a book of tickets. You couldn't even ride everything. You had to choose like which ticket you wanted to ride. And once those tickets were gone, they were gone. And then they, they did, when I was younger, I was in Royal Rangers, and we used to do uh, Disneyland Day, and um, they went to these $20 tickets, and that's when you could ride everything, and it was awesome. And, you know, Disneyland does not look the same as it did when I was younger. It has changed. Now, I still love the old rides of Disneyland. All the old rides are amazing. They're so much fun. Pirates of the Caribbean, there is no place on earth that smells like Pirates of the Caribbean. <laughs> It is a distinct smell, and it is the only place that smells like that. I love Pirates of the Caribbean. But I can tell you this. I'm so glad that Disneyland didn't stay the exact same as it did when it first opened. It's only gotten better. I don't know if you guys have ridden the Rise of the Resistance. Okay, I'm a Star Wars fan. I went on it for the first time about two months ago. Oh, my goodness. Like, I was like, okay, Lord, I'm done. You're good. That was amazing. Um, I've been in Star Wars. I'm, it's good. Um, you know, and so it's so easy to kind of hold on to the baton and not pass it to the next generation because we think our way is the best way. But can I tell you this? God keeps doing new things in every generation. And it's so encouraging to, to see that happen and to see that take place. I saw 2,000 teenagers just worshiping the Lord. Can I tell you, this generation, they love Jesus. And as, as much as we did and as much as we've done things, can I tell you, we have got to accept this generation with open arms. They're going to be a little bit different. Their music's going to be a little bit different and a little bit louder. But at some point, someone thought that about our generation. And so can I tell you, we've got to be willing to pass the baton. One of the reasons we can't hold on to it is because we think our way is the best way. The next one is this. You have trust issues with the next generation. And I get it. Every generation looks a little bit different. Every generation looks uh, just not the same. And, and, but, you know, it's, again, it's easy to look at one generation and think, oh, you know, they're all about themselves or they're weird or what they're doing is weird and we don't understand them and they have all these different words that they use or this different music that they listen to. But one of the cool things that I've seen throughout the years is simply this. God's promises do not expire. They go from one generation to the next. I had the honor. The church that I've been at, I've been there my entire life. Um, it's the only church I've ever gone to. Um, I, I started going there. My mom started going to church there when I was younger, and uh, I've just, I've always been there. I never dreamed I'd be the youth pastor one day, let alone the lead pastor, but I've only been a part of one church my entire life. I, I had the honor um, a few years ago to talk to the founding pastor of our church, and he was about 90 years old at that point. And I talked to him. Pastor Price was his name. And I said, Pastor Price, tell me about your dreams. Tell me about your vision for the church. And he said, you know, my heart was young people. He said, I love young people. 
He, uh, he said, my dream was to have a youth center. My dream was to have a place, that, a church in, in, in the city that teenagers just flocked to, that they came to, that they hung out, that they, they just, even when we weren't having service, that they were there and a part of it. And, and I said, so did you see that? He said, we had a youth group, but we never got to that place. And I be, was able at that point to, to be able to share with him, well, can I tell you about what we've been able to do in youth ministry? We have a full skate park that's open seven days a week. We have kids on campus constantly. We have an after-school program. There's teenagers on this campus all the time. And I was able to share these things with him. And it didn't happen in his lifetime. But what God had done, and what I just said, God's promises do not expire. They go from one generation to the next. And so I want to encourage you, what God's doing here in this church, it's going to continue. It's not going to look the same, but it's going to continue with this generation. It's going to keep going. And it's exciting. And yes, the generation behind us is always going to look a little bit different than us, but we have to trust God, that he's got a plan, that he's working in their life, that he's going to do something. Another thing that keeps us from passing the baton to the next generation is you don't want to feel like you're off the team. I don't, want to, I don't want to give up the baton. I want to be in the race. I want to keep doing those things. And I get that. I get that. I don't know how, how, if I've overstayed my time in youth ministry, but I love youth ministry, and I love teenagers, and I love students. But I can say this. My role has changed through the years. And it's okay to want to be in the race, but we have to understand this, that at times our roles change when it comes to the race. My oldest son, or I'm sorry, my youngest son is Asher. He just turned 18, and for the last two years, he has been saying, um, let's race. I want to race, Dad. I think I'm faster than you, and I'm like, no, I don't want to embarrass you. It's okay. Like, <laughs> People will see. And, uh, and he's like, no, I think I can beat you. So finally, a few weeks ago, I said, okay, we can race. And so we, we raced, and he beat me, and he beat me. And it, it's one of these moments where I was, like, bummed, <laughs> but I was also really proud of him because he's growing up. He's maturing. He's, 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 uh, I want him to be in the race. I want him to, to be faster. I don't want him to be, you know, five years old for the rest of his life. I want him to grow up and mature and, and get stronger and um, spiritually get stronger. And, and so it, it's a cool moment to, to see that happen in his life. But it's also that moment where I'm like, oh, man, am I slower? Like, am I, am I dying? What's happening? You know, and, and but here's the cool thing. I get the idea of wanting to still be in the race, wanting to have that feeling. I still have something to offer. Can I tell you, as long as you have air in your lungs, you have something to offer. As long as you have air in your lungs, you are in the race. But here's the cool part. Our roles change at times. Because people that are racing, sometimes we go from being in the race to coaching the race. Sometimes we go from being one of the runners and, and passing the baton to teaching others how to pass the baton. One of the things a coach does is, he, what does he do? He cheers his runners on. But more than that, he teaches them. He teaches them how to pass that baton in the exchange zone. It has to be done just right. It can't be done too early. It can't be done too late. It can't be dropped. It has to be done perfect. How do they learn that? Someone teaches them. Church, can I tell you, it is so important that we take that role on, that we teach the generation behind us, that we pour into the generation behind us, that we help them run the race, that we get excited for them. It was a bummer to have Asher beat me, but on the other side, I'm going, yes! My role changed from being the winner of the race to being the cheerleader, to cheer him on. When I see this generation, I want to cheer them on. They're all going to be faster than me at some point. They're all going to be stronger. They're all going to have more energy. They're going to be able to do more in ministry. What is my role? I'm going to cheer them on. Run, run. You've got this. Keep going. Church, it's so important that we know what it is to pass that spiritual baton to the generation behind us. We can't miss that. 
But I want to say this to the younger generation. There's things that cause us to miss the baton. There's things that cause us to drop the baton in receiving it from the generation before us. And so I just want you to think about these three things. The first one is this. One of the ways we don't receive the baton, we don't pick up the baton, is we don't honor the past. We have to honor the past. We have to remember what God has done and the things that he's done. This is an amazing church that's been here for quite a while. There are people that have come before you. We come here, you come here every week, standing on the shoulders of spiritual giants that have built this place up, that have built legacies here. Um, we have to honor those people that have come before us. And remember who they are. Too many times in ministry, I hear people referred to, and I hear students and even youth pastors at time, not your youth pastor, but I hear students and youth pastors at time refer to it as it's youth group and there's big church. Uh, there's youth group, and we have good music, and our music's fast, and we have light. And then there's big church. It's boring. It's, you know, they don't get it. They're out of date. Can I tell you, there's not youth, and there's not big church. It's church. And you're part of a church family of people that have come before you, that have run this race, that have run it well, that have run it for a lifetime. If I could tell you guys to go do anything on Sunday morning, go find some of the people in, this, in, in your church that have gray hair, that have lived life a little bit. We'll just say they're a bit seasoned and ask them, how'd you do it? How'd you run this race? It is so important that we, are, are, we learn from the group that went before us that have run the race, that have made it through life, that have passed the baton. It's important that we honor those that have came before us. I tell youth pastors, young youth pastors all the time, honor the youth pastors that came before you. Honor your lead pastor. But I would say to students, there are, are family members, there are parents, there's aunts and uncles, there's just people in your church that have come before you. Honor them. Honor the past. Learn from them. Learn from the things that they've gone through. Learn from the mistakes that they've made. There's people that you think, oh, they wouldn't understand. They don't get it. They're too old. They've run the race. They've been through the exact same things that you've been through in a different time and a different generation, but it's the same things, and they figured out how to pass the baton. Learn from them. They figured out how to run the race. Learn from them. There's this story that I heard one time about this young man who was on this road, and there was this hole in the road, and he fell down into the hole. And he was trying to get out of the hole, and he could not do it. He could not reach the top. And so one guy comes by with a rope, and he kind of drops the rope down, and the rope's just out of his reach, and he's trying to jump up and grab it, jump up and grab it. He can't get it. And the guy finally is like, I'm so sorry. I, I, I can't help you. I can't do anything. So he leaves. Another guy comes by, and he's like, Hey, can you help me? And he, he tries to reach down, and again, he can't even get close. And he's just like, hey, I'm so sorry. I'm gonna, I, I can't help you. I'm going to go on. Another guy comes by. He sees this guy stuck down in the hole, and he jumps down there with him. And the guy's like, what are you doing? Why would you jump down here with me? Now we're both stuck. And he's like, no, no, no. He said, I've been down in this hole before. I know the way out. Can I tell you, there's a whole generation that have come before you and they've gone through similar things as you. It may seem like a different time and so long ago, but can I tell you this? Spiritually, they know the way out. Listen to them. Listen to them. Honor them. It's so important. Another thing that keeps the, the younger generation from receiving the baton is, is they think they always have to be the anchor. You live in a, in a crazy generation. You really do. And I would say this, and I honestly mean this. I, I think um, for a, a, one of the hardest places to be a teenager, to be a Christian right now, is in the junior high and high school. Because you have so much coming at you guys. It is just a different time uh, with social media, with all of those things. You guys are facing things that, that even my generation had no idea. We didn't face those things. Not like you guys are. 
But you, you are very much in a generation that is a me generation, that it's all about you. And the world's telling you that it's all about you. You are the most important thing. And can I tell you, that's part of the problem is we, we have this generation of everybody wants to be famous. Everybody wants to be known. Everybody wants their voice heard. Um, everyone wants to be popular. All of these things. And it's not necessarily all your fault because the world is telling you this is what's important when it's truly not. And part of the problem when it comes to passing the, the baton to the next generation and you guys receiving it is you think I've got to be the anchor. Everybody in a race sees the person who starts and the person who finishes and we think that's what I want to do. I want to be that person. I want to be the one that starts the race and gets us going and everyone will remember me. I want to be the guy that finishes the race and passes the finish line and, and everyone sees it and has all the glory but no one wants to be racer two and three. When the fact is, without racer two and three doing their job and doing it well, you don't win the race. They have to do their part. They have to run that race. They have to do everything possible to finish that race. They may not get the glory, but they're just as important. We need a generation of young people who want to not be on a stage, not be the, the worship leader. Now, God's going to call people to that. He's going to call people to lead worship. He's going to call people to be pastors and to be on stage or to sing or to do announcements. But you know what? We need people who just want to serve in the church. We need people who just want to serve in kids' ministries. We need people who just want to be youth leaders. We need people who just want to help with offering on Sunday mornings. You don't need to be the anchor. You just need to be in the race. And so I want to encourage you, don't go at it with, I've got to be famous, I've got to be known, it's got to be about me. Just be in the race. Find an opportunity to serve your church in any way possible. Look for opportunities, ask for opportunities. The third one is this. The third thing that kind of causes a younger generation from receiving the baton is they just don't want it. They just don't want the baton. And there's a generation before them that's trying to pass them the baton, trying to give it to them, but they're not receiving it. Can I tell you, I've seen too many young people who a, a generation has tried to pass the baton to, and they've said, nah, you know, I'm good. You keep it. I don't like that color baton, or, you know, I don't really want to run this race, or, you know, I, I have plans. I have dreams. Can I tell you, God has plans for your lives. He has dreams for your life. And I know it's easy in the culture that we live in to make it all about me. And, and you know, I had a, a young pastor um, who was working for me at one time. I had asked him to lead worship for a, a, a funeral that was happening. And he looked at me and he said, you know, I, I would, but I need some me time. I said, bro, that happens in heaven. Um, you're going to be at worship. So I encourage you, it's not about us. It's about him. And instead of not running the race because you have your own dreams, your own plans, can I tell you, run the race that God has planned for you. He has a plan for you. And I know, um, when I, I know what it's like to, to think I have dreams and I have a, a, an idea of what I want to do. My plan was to go into to law enforcement. That was my plan. I was looking forward to it. I thought that's where I was headed. But God had a totally different plan for me to be a youth pastor. And I had no idea that was coming. But I'm so thankful that I grabbed that baton and ran that race that he had for me. I just want to encourage you guys. It's okay to chase things, but chase the dreams that God has for you. Be looking for those, because he does. He has great ones for you. I want to read this scripture out of Hebrews, Hebrews 12, 1 and 2. It says, Therefore, since we were surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us Throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. For the joy set before him, he endured on the cross, scoring its shame and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Can I tell you, we have got to fix our eyes on Jesus. Fix our eyes on Jesus. If I can tell you guys anything, fix your eyes on Jesus. It's not easy. I look back at the last 51 years of my life and, and, and think, man, there's, there's times this race has been tough. But what I've learned through all that, and let me just give you a little bit of life experience, I've learned if I get up and just keep my eyes on Jesus, 
And I may trip. I may make a mistake. I may backslide. But as long as I keep getting up and fixing my eyes on Jesus, keep running towards Jesus, keep pushing towards Jesus, you are in the race, young people. So keep running. Keep moving forward. You don't want to miss this race. We've got to get this spiritual exchange zone right. If we don't get the baton of faith into the hands of the next generation, then we have not completed this race. Going back to that verse I read in Judges, Judges 2.10, after the whole generation had been gathered to their ancestors, another generation grew up who knew neither the Lord nor what he had done for them. That That is crazy to me. That you have this whole generation that knew the Lord and had done and knew all that he had done for Israel, and just one generation later, something happened. They didn't know it. They didn't understand. They had never heard of it. What happened there? Something went wrong in the exchange zone. Church, we have got to get that right. We've got to get that right. The only way this house, the only way this building, the only way this church continues and lasts if we do it right in the exchange zone. I know you may see this generation and and you may not see what I see, but can I tell you what sits up here? Future pastors, future worship leaders for sure, but future board members, future uh, children's leaders, future volunteers, future givers, we have to do it right. We have to pour into the next generation. We have to believe in the next generation. And I'll be honest, just talking to Angie tonight, I know this church gets it. Because even tonight she was telling me this church pours financially into students to help them get to camp, to help them get to convention. That tells me this church gets it. They get what it is to pour into this next generation. They get what it is to to do whatever it takes to get this next generation to a place where they're following the Lord. And I love hearing that. I think it's important, and I think it's something that we need to truly uh, invest in. The generation before us was built on something, and I have a picture I want to show you guys that really kind of wraps everything up for me here, but of how important it is to, to, to prepare for the future. This is my home church. Um, this is back in 1973. And I look at this and, and, and I see all of these people and I recognize a couple of them. Our church doesn't look like that anymore. It looks a lot different. We definitely don't dress like that anymore. But you have this church, a, a, just a bunch of people, a bunch of young families who are serving the Lord. They're having worship. They're doing children's ministry. They had a youth ministry. And they're just serving the Lord as a whole church. And they're preparing. And they're building. And they had no idea. Can you keep that up there for me? They had no idea what Cornerstone was going to look like in the future. But they knew they wanted to build something to last. They knew all those kids that were sitting up front. They knew... That we want to build a church that's not going to continue for a decade. It's going to continue for generations. We want to build something that lasts. We want to build something that God can continue to use in this community. And so that's what this church, they had no idea that on the far, my right, so that far corner, you see a little guy in some overalls sitting on his mom's lap. That was me. I love this picture. Because you have this whole church that's pouring into this community, that's pouring into their children, that's, that's running this race, that's building something to last, having no idea that one day that little two-year-old sitting on his mom's lap was going to be the youth pastor for 30 years. That one day that little, youth pa- that little guy on his, on his mom's lap was going to be the lead pastor of the church. But they kept building 
It's why it's so important, church, that we keep pouring in to the generation behind us, that we keep building something here, that we keep supporting the pastors, that we keep supporting the ministries, that we are volunteering wherever we can when it comes to children's, when it comes to Royal Rangers and Missionettes and kids and youth and all of these different things. Can I tell you, it's so important that we keep serving, that we keep building because we are in a race and we've got to run this race. We've got to pass the baton to the next generation and then become the biggest cheerleaders for that generation it's so important I believe and I hope with my home church I hope that that cornerstone outlasts me that I'm dead and gone and they're still doing great things for the Lord in that community I believe in this church. I believe that for decades, for generations to come, people in Chino are going to know Jesus. This is going to be a lighthouse. But the only way that that will happen is if we run the race and pass the baton well in the exchange zone. So I encourage you, let's, let's do it well. Can I pray for you? Can you bow your heads and let's pray? Father, I just come to you right now, Lord Jesus. I thank you for this church. I thank you for their pastors and their leaders, Lord. I thank you for the things that you're doing already, Lord. But Lord, I pray right now that you would just continue to build a church that's going to run this race, Father. That they're not going to slow down, that they're going to keep running, Lord. And at times, maybe they're the runner. At times, maybe they're the coach. At times, maybe they're the cheerleader. But, Lord, that you continue to use every generation of this church, Father. Lord, I pray that they would pass the baton well. Lord, I pray for the young people in this church, Lord. I thank you for the young people in this church, Lord. That they would continue to serve and worship and, and, and kids and wherever else they can serve, Lord. That you continue to raise up the next generation that's going to take the baton and they're going to keep running. Until this race is finished, Father. Pray for your covering over them right now, Jesus. I want to do one thing. I'm going to ask all the youth, would you kind of come up here, up front here with me? Just kind of stand up here facing the stage. And I'm just going to ask, maybe some of you adults, would you come up behind them? Come in behind them and, and, and would you pray with them? Any of you adults that want to just kind of come up. Let's gather behind them. And I'm going to put Angie on the spot. I'm going to Angie come up. And, and I'm just going to ask you, would you would you lead the prayer over your students and, and adults? Even if you're not up here, would you just maybe put your hand out towards these students, this generation that we're excited for, that we're believing in, that we're going to, someday pass the baton to that we've already started to in some ways seeing all these great uh, young people up here leading worship tonight let's pray for them dear heavenly father god we come before you again Lord, with a grateful heart god grateful that you've uh, created all of us father and thank you for this message father that you poured out into us today god and lord thank you for both perspectives lord for the old the current generation, God, to see the importance of the younger generation, Lord, but also for the younger generation to honor those who have come before them, Father. And right now, Lord, I pray for these students standing up here, Father. I pray, Lord, that they would know who you are, Father. That whatever the outside world is telling them, Father, that whatever culture is telling them, God, that the, the just me culture, Father, that you would just remove that from their hearts, Lord. I pray that you would just for those who need a transformation in their heart right now, God, that they would need to hear your voice, Father. Pray, Holy Spirit, come meet them here right now. Pour your spirit out upon them, Father. Let them know, Lord, that they are capable to do your work, Father. That they are able, God, that you have blessed them with hands and feet and minds and mouths, God. With so many skills and talents, Lord, to pour out into your church, Father. That it's not too soon for them to do, God. That, that church ministry is not for later, God. It's not for when they're married. It's not for when they have their lives together, God. But it's for now. It's for here, Father. Lord, I pray for all those that are passing the baton, God, to be okay with it, Father. Settle their hearts, Lord. Let them know that this generation can handle it, God. They just need their guidance, 
Father. I pray that you would help us all, Father, to be able to make that transition be the best transition we can be, Lord, because that's the only way that your word will go forth, Father, that this church will continue to be a light, God. I, I thank you, Father, for these students that are here right now, God, because you have called them to this moment for a purpose, God, that you had this appointment with them tonight to hear this message, God, to know that you have marked them. They've heard this before, Lord, through other conventions and stuff. They've been marked by you, God. They can run, Father, but they can't hide. They've been marked by you, God. And Father, I pray that you would make us great coaches, God, that you would allow us to step out of that race gracefully, God, and to be amazing coaches to these students, Father, and that you would give them the desire to take that baton, God, that you would give them that desire to just go ahead and take it, Father, even though they're scared, even though they don't feel like they're worthy.